Good morning, everyone, on this sunny, sunny March morning. We give thanks to God for a new day as we gather in prayer with Luther's prayer and then our, our morning prayer that's been with the church for centuries. Um, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. So we have limping with God by Chad Bird, and we're on the chapter about brothers Harry and Heal, and on Tuesday we talked about ambition, and kind of the, is it a vice or is it a virtue, and to kind of the, depending on how we use it, was our, a little bit of our broad stroke conclusion, but um, so finishing this chapter, he brings in some stuff from the New Testament, and also sin and God's grace and response. So I'll just read kind of what Chad has here and we can discuss. Um, let's see. Paul in Bite, Biting Irony tells the disciples in Thessalonica, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. The apostle is saying, oh, so you want to be ambitious. Well then make it your ambition to be unambitious. Or as our rabbi himself put it, if anyone would be first, he must be a last of all and servant of all, Mark 9. Blessed are the meek, Jesus said, alluding to Psalm 37, where we read that the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. The meek in Hebrew is one who is anvar, humble, that's a word in Hebrew, Humble, lowly, unpretentious, one who patiently endures suffering. The ambition of the meek is to serve in quietness and in the fear of the Lord. But Jacob, he was ambitious. Chad says he was ambitious too. And that demon, always sulking in the shadows of success, stares with glowing eyes at my weary soul still today. I hate it and I would kick at every chance I get. But because it is so akin to pride, ambition will continue haunting me, and it haunts many others. Isn't that the way sin works? We may hate a particular evil or vice. It may once have destroyed our lives. We may know its inner workings, its seductive traps, its deadly fruits, and that does not mean it goes away. I have known alcoholics, for instance, who stayed on the wagon for decades only to fall off one day and shatter their lives once again. Did they not know that would happen? Of course they knew, but such is the blinding power of evil. We will see that what dark times await Jacob, that ambitious young man. One truth, however, that will emerge repeatedly in his life as it emerges over and over in our own is this. Were it not for the grace and mercy of the Lord, he would have ruined everything beyond possibility of redemption. Were it up to Jacob to fix things, all would have remained broken. But he and we worship a God who knows how to deal both in severity and in kindness with stupid sinners like ourselves. He breaks us, he breaks us down. Sometimes, if need be, he crushes us. And dear God, that hurts. We are undone. But that is only the beginning. Our Father is far more than a heavenly hammer for whom everything on earth looks like a nail. He breaks down and he builds up. He shatters and shapes. He crucifies and resurrects. Isn't it amazing to think that while on the cross, dying for evil, dying for ambition, dying for all the sins of humanity, the humble Lord of love lifted up his heel and brought it down on the head of the serpent. In the, a splendid irony, the father gave us a heel, a Jacob, to whom we can hold fast as we emerge from death to life again in him. 
So a question to kind of add to this. What does it mean that God breaks us down and builds us up, shatters and shapes, crucifies and resurrects? For biblical examples, look at how the Lord dealt with Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel 4 or the prodigal son in Luke 15. So this is the other kind of piece of ambition and sin. The scripturally kind of like ambition to lead a quiet life, ambition to be of service, to care, to be meek, to be humble, to be lowly and unpretentious, to be a servant of all rather than to be served by all that that should be our ambition. I mean, the irony of it, the oxymoron of it, moronic quality of it, I guess we can name as well, but um, how kind of our Christian life in the law is this constant struggle between what our society says is success and um, wholeness and fulfillment and then emptying ourselves and and sacrificing and um, being present for those who are not successful, who who are in need, and and to admit them when we need that too, um, to be that meekness, uh, the lowly of I'm just me, <laughs> um, to admit that we're um, instead of hiding all of our faults, I'm not saying post them all on social media or wear them on a T-shirt saying guess what I did today. Um, we don't need to be publicly shamed for this, but in recognition of our sin that I think there's a truth in the fact of if you've had a time in your life where you have fallen into sin, whatever it might be, a significant vice, maybe it is even despair of the, the sin of not believing that you're worth it. So that doubt that worth it or pride thinking that you're more worth more than others, um, vices of alcohol, drugs, success, um, money, um, not being faithful, all whatever that potentially has happened in your life or somebody you know. Once you fall, you know you have the ability to do it. <laughs> you know that um, it could happen again. And that can keep you um, from doing it, knowing that the wages of that was destruction and brokenness. But th the reality is that you now forever know that you're capable of doing something like that that you um, have fallen short and it's part of your narrative. So whether it's you don't do it again ever, but it's a, sh a shadow haunting you. And yes, we can and we should receive the forgiveness and mercy of God. Um, but while we have flesh and bone, there is temptation and there is um, risk in that, that you will continually maybe not for the same reason, but there'll be another thing that breaks you down or that breaks you, um, that you fail to trust evil is at work in our world. But the good news here is that um, if it's up to Jacob to fix things, they would have been re remained broken throughout his life. All that he did, they would have remained broken. So the story is, yes, it's Jacob's story, but it's also the story of God's redemption of Jacob and God's um, redemption of all those that Jacob harmed <laughs> along the way, that God lifts up and the scattered and the broken and makes them whole again. So all of these stories are also the story and maybe primarily the story of God's provision, grace and mercy that is so desperately needed in our world. Um, I don't love the fact that God does break us down at times and even crush us um, and it hurts, saying that this isn't the means of your righteousness. This is not a, a pathway that's going to be at all one of life for you, or maybe it's one of life for you, but not for your neighbors. And so our God um, wheels the law and the gospel. God puts us to death and brings us to new life. He, he shatters us and then shapes us. He forms us um, like the earthen vessels that we are. And then in the end, I love the, this ironic twist that on the cross, he does lift his heel and fulfill that um, from Genesis of the, um, the bruised heel. And now he is the one that crushes the serpent's head, the, um, the power of that over us. So just, I think today, the, the, to, 
to kind of hold on to our the ambition to be humble, but also the the lurking shadow of sin and um, brokenness that is over us, and that God's response is not to abandon us in that, but to give us new life in Him, and to shape us, cruci um, when He is crucified, we are resurrected in Him, and that is indeed good news for us who maybe do have that shadow over us of I failed this one time therefore I am forever a failure or um, or in our relationships that when we we make one mistake and we are reminded of that mistake that in resurrection we are not that mistake we are redeemed and we are reformed in God's grace and glory for the sake of ourselves and the sake of our neighbor thanks be to God be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. We give thanks, Lord, that even on after our best days, when our good works are, are examined in the morning and we become prideful, <laughs> or we despair that they weren't enough to um, hold back pain and suffering and brokenness in the world, that you come in with your word again to us giving us your grace and mercy, reminding us that you are always our savior and will never outgrow that need. So today, as we begin again, we ask that you continue to um, pull those good works out of us, um, whether we wanna give them or not, and you um, put us in service to our neighbors in their need to bring your resurrection dawn with us wherever we go as well. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. We continue to ask that you are with those in our community in need of healing, that are, are lacking wholeness and need to um, be reminded and given um, fullness of life. Be with um, doctors and nurses and medical staff. Be with um, physical therapists and occupational therapists, hospice workers, um, home health care people be with um, patients as well as professionals and be with the families that surround. Forgive us when we do not believe that you are present in these moments of our life. As you walk with us in the valley of the shadow of death, remind us that you are with us always. For the gifts of relationship with others, um, pour us out for the sake of our neighbors and pour them out for our sake. Um, and then forgive us. <laughs> again and then repeat lord um this is the gift of being your creature your creatures and we ask that you continue to help us to see um, that that is a gift for the communion of faith in your church thank you for lifting up song together and worshiping thank you for um, kids who are running to get to church and thank you for um, the many ways that we can grow and help us to grow in new ways, to make new connections with those um, who you call us to be a body of Christ together with, people who we might not ever have talked with otherwise or broken bread with otherwise. Um, the odd reality of this body of Christ that we are um, is a blessing, Lord. So help us to live in that blessing with grace and mercy. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for our legislature and our judicial branch. We pray for our local governments. We pray for Bonnie Lake as her mayor is stepping down. We pray for um, Israel and Palestine and Miramar 
and Ukraine and Russia. We pray for um, other conflicts throughout our world and their leaders. And for people in countries ravaged by war strife or warfare, we ask that you see them, that you provide for them, that you um, give neighbors the ambition to be um, present <laughs> with those in need and to um, maybe sacrifice a little bit for the provision of others. For all who work for peace and international harmony, Lord, thank you for this important work. And for all who strive to save the, save the earth from carelessness and destruction, help us to do better. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, support and sustain, um, call us together and give us your abundance, Lord. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I cut it off sooner, but that's okay. Um, go in peace. Christ is with you. <laughs>